Robin Hanell is a professor in economics at Portland State University in the United States. And you're one of the founders of the Paracon movement, participatory economics, which you claim to be superior to both capitalism, communism, and market socialism. And among the books uh, you've written is Economic Justice and Democracy, which has been a delightful read. Uh, it's not for sale here, but uh, uh, there are a few copies of a Paracon uh, paper which, which you can buy. If you want. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to your presentation. Robin Hanell. Actually, um, I have a new book that I'll advertise. It was, we thought it was going to be here. Um, Actually, we know it got to Finland today, don't we? Um, but maybe I, at least we'll get back to Sweden in a day or two. Um, th this is a, a new presentation of um, sort of the idea of a participatory Sorry, economy. Um, it's current. It's up to date. Hopefully, it's corrected some things from the past. Hopefully, it's corrected. Hopefully, it's explained things more clearly. It's shorter and smaller and more succinct, so that makes it presumably attractive. It's called Of the People, By the People, The Case for a Participatory Economy. Um, and I don't, if that phrase sounds familiar, it might not over here. It, it, it always sounds familiar in the United States because it, it comes, it's a quotation, it's part of a quotation from a speech by Abraham Lincoln. And the entire quote is, uh, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And we left out the for the people for a reason. Um, it's basically our contention that unless it is of the people and by the people, it will never be for the people. So you want an economy that is of the people and by the people if you want an economy that serves the people. Um, that's how you're going to have to get it. And it's then the case for a participatory economy. It's uh, AK Press is distributing it. Um, it's going to be out as an e-book as well as uh, as a printed book. And so I would urge people. I'm, there, there's no way I could possibly explain things as thoroughly as well as I have in the book. So you know many things that I won't be able to talk about and won't even come up in question and answer. Um, you can you can find there. Um, now. Uh, here I am in the land of social democracy. <laughs> and, uh, it's my first visit. I've been a long admirer. Um, I am not, I have never believed that all versions of capitalism are equally awful. I think there are a tremendous difference between you know, different versions of capitalism. Um, and to make a long story short, um, I think neoliberal versions of capitalism are much, much worse than what I call social democratic versions of capitalism. Um, in the United States, when you use the word social democracy, it, it doesn't register. Um, people don't usually know what that means. Um, it's because we've never had a strong social democratic party, we've never had a period of time when we lived in an economy that was more or less a social democratic version of the capitalist economy. Um, but here you know what social democracy means. Um, and <coughs> I just want to say for the record that I think social democracy is infinitely superior to neoliberal capitalism. Um, I also say for the record that I think that one or another version of worker self-managed market socialism would be an advance and improvement, considerable improvement over social democracy, social democratic capitalism. Um, on the other hand, um, I think we can do far better. Um, and I think we should do far better. Um, and I don't think that what we should aspire to when people say, okay, we've heard you complain about this, we've heard you complain about that, but what do you want instead? Um, I think we have something better to say than uh, we want just a somewhat different version of a market economy. 
Um, well, <coughs> what is this alternative? Um, and what is, what is the, the model of a participatory economy? Um, I can tell you where, I can tell you how it is that Michael Albert and I sort of originally came up with the idea and what prompted us to do so. Um, has anybody heard of Alec Nove? He's a very, very well-known British, he's dead now, so that's one reason you might not have heard of him, depending on your age. Um, he's a British um, economist, I uh, can't remember whether he taught at Oxford or Cambridge for years and years. Um, he's very, very well-known as an expert on the Soviet economy. But in 1983, he wrote a book called The Economics of Feasible Socialism. And what he said in the introduction to the book was, he said, look, um, many of my friends have been working under an illusion for a long, long time. And this illusion is debilitating because this illusion keeps them from just getting down to the business of fighting and winning a feasible kind of socialism. Um, by which he meant something partly between social democracy and market socialism. Um, and he said, here's the illusion they've operated under. Um, they think that, in, in fact, reality is you can have a market economy or you can have an authoritarian system of planning. There is no third way. And a lot of people who become disenamored of capitalism have throughout you know, the history of people who are unhappy with capitalism have operated, he was arguing, under the illusion that there is a third way. There is something other than authoritarian planning and markets in terms of what kind of an economic system we're looking at. Um, Michael Albert and I, we read that and we said, well, we are we have now been for a number of years just such a person. Um, we do believe that there is an alternative and somebody has thrown down the gauntlet and they basically use the Tina defense. There is no alternative. And you should recognize the Tina defense is, I mean, this is something that ruling elites have used throughout history when they basically can't defend what they're doing on its merits. When I can't tell you, when, when your complaints that this are awful and that's awful, when I really can't disagree or argue with you anymore, I just say, you're right, you're right, but there's no alternative. And <coughs> so we said, well, just because somebody says there is no alternative doesn't mean there is no alternative. Um, and we said, we just don't believe that the kind of economy that many, many people who become disenamored of, of capitalism and who never found authoritarian planning or communism attractive in the least, we don't think that the idea that there's an alternative beyond those two things is a fantasy, is a myth, you know, at all. So we basically said, well, look, let's, see, let's sit down and see if we can design an economy um, that's coherent that actually we will come up with a system of procedures that are ways to answer all the questions that any economy has to answer. I mean, every economy has to answer, well, how are you going to decide what to produce? How are you going to decide whether to produce something this way or that way? How are you going to distribute the burdens and benefits of economic? How are all these kinds of decisions, these different kinds of decisions that have to be made in any economy, how do you propose that they're made? So what economists would say is, well, a coherent economic model is a model that answers all those questions. So it's, it's an actual proposal that says this is how every one of those questions